Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the, I think, second or last game of the day. We've got our host juggernaut versus Fishwick. Um, now, uh, Fishwick's in the orange and uh, Hoss is in the uh, dark red. And you'll see why it's put it up. Let's make it an easy goal. Good stuff for Hoss. So uh, I might be getting a guest commentator later today, but currently, I'm just flying solo. Oh, okay, I've been told uh, I'm getting uh, John McNaughton to, to help me out with uh, the Hoss and Chili Boys. But uh, overall, I could probably get a, a few comments from both teams, uh, depending on how well they are, how they go. This is the host team that is going to Worlds. And the score is Hoss 1-0. Perfect. Thanks, Jack. So, Hoss coming up with the pull. With uh, a, uh, a nice breeze. Coming to the camera. And, uh, oh, great effort from Mambo for getting that frisbee so that it doesn't roll away. Mile Hingi moving the frisbee. Mile Hingi, oh. Sounds like uh, we've got a, a very excited dog. Mambo back in the middle of the field. Going to. Number three, Adam Mortimer, with a big over the top shot. Bit, getting a bit trapped there. Got Matthews Hunter moving the disc well. Keeping on the high side, I feel, for Mumbo. Now it goes back to Matthews Hunter and swings all the way back. James Lake, coach, looking for a big swing, comes in attacks, so but can't get it through. Back to Mambo, go to Miles pointing, doesn't want it. You got David Manners in the back, waiting for the freezer to come to him. Just not coming through. Moving nice and easy. Over to Matthews Hunter. Oh, and a nice slot through the gap. Hingy to Mile. Matt. Mambo was going to throw it, but Deck Frey decides to stop that option going through. Oh, I apologize, that wasn't David McManus looking for the frisbee. Oh, what a great inside break. My wants it. He doesn't get it, but it goes over the top instead and gets put down. Fishwick gets their name to the board. Few, few questionable throws there, but... In the end, it, uh, it didn't rattle them too far. That was number 20, Matt Svados, catching the frisbee. All right. Looks like frisbee, uh, Fishwick is going to be pulling the disc down. Hopefully moving it nice and easily. Hopefully the, the score on the scoreboard says one all. Good, it's a correct score. And uh, I'm joined here by the one and only John McNaught. He's just setting himself up. <laughs> we'll, we'll mark him up in just a sec. Alright, Matthew's Hunter with the pull. Looking to see what he can do. The windows die down just a little bit. But he goes to the nice outside in, coming in. Closing it off. No 59, hop, hope. The disc looking for something to go in. 
looking in. And uh, going to Wise. Wise are moving in. And uh, Hope's got the disc again. Looking for something to come out. Della has the disc now. Della soots it. Sending it. Dallas keeps going, but he doesn't look like he's... Doesn't matter. When he was looking around for it, I thought he was going to get run down. But anyway, John McNaughton, how are you? Oh, top of the world, mate. Mammoth has just won the pool after a nail bite against Chile. Oh, yeah. Great game to commentate. Yeah. Many right. many words were, were thrown at Pete Allen. <laughs> yeah. Many words are thrown on and around the field as well. <laughs> Which is what you want to see. David McManus picks up the disc. Puts it to McCallum. Not, not the same as Miles McCallum. But speaking of Miles, you got, oh, Miles Hingy with the hops. God damn, that boy's got springs in his legs. Nice low release, but unfortunately it's too low for the defender. McCallum overcompensating in that one. Pops one up and then throws one to the turf. Hasn't, uh, obviously hasn't got enough touches yet. If he's putting it too high or too low. Yeah, sometimes early game can be a little bit difficult to calibrate. Absolutely. Wise has gone off the races. Daly is chasing behind. He puts it up. Daly and Wise is too short though. Daly's got that for sure. But he throws it a bit too early and Mikey Trung says, nah, boys, let's just chill. Let's just wait. Let's get some structure and let's get uh, Joe Hub to get some movement. See what he does. And he puts it to the end zone and it's a nice, easy score. Pos, two, one. I'll admit, you normally coach to avoid that sort of fadeaway throw into the end zone, but Poppy's put that on a dime. Yeah. No question about it. Seeing Matt, if uh, Fishwick can uh, return the favour. Matt, do you know how these teams have gone today? Uh, no. I do. The only news that I have between the two teams is that, uh, unfortunately, the uh, host captain, Tim McLeese Copeland, who is uh, an old Brisbane boy, uh, he is in hospital at the moment, which is uh, quite stunning, but uh, he's just split his uh, mouth open. Yeah, uh, boys just heard that at the end of that last game. Um, much love and many shout outs to Tim, who's been a stalwart uh, Queensland Ultimate for a few years. Absolutely. And has since moved to colder climbs. Greener pastures, but I really wouldn't say they're greener in Melbourne. Well, if you look at the fields right here today, I'm not sure that you can get many greener pastures. I was going to say, uh, me and Makaska were talking before about how green and how good looking the Annerley fields are. Usually, we are quite quite uh, eager to play in dirt, um, but don't know what they've done. Don't know what, what Lilwell has done, sprinkling a bit of magic dust, but... I it's think it's the benefit good. of a soccer off season and a month of rain. Yeah, Mambo picks up the disc, centers it to... Open up. Interesting to note that Mortimer is downfield on this point. He's spent a couple of tournaments so far this season sort of anchoring the Fishwick offensive line as the main handler and shot taker. Interesting to see how they use the handlers and how they use him at this point. Yep, and uh, it seems to be working. There is a uh, really nice movement, but close, close shots by both, uh, both squads. Fishwick collapsed into a vertical structure now. Mambo with the disc, takes a bit of contact, gets up, continues moving. Dave Lockhart hasn't been playing in Australia for a couple of years now, oh. been away in Korea. What wow. a fantastic grab on the outside edge. Didn't think it would happen, but it did. Visionary, you might say, Mark. Absolutely. Looking at that replay, what a great grab, outside edge coming off it. Makes it look effortless. But I tell you what, that is a that is a hard throw to uh, catch, that's for sure. Evans, two all. <laughs> go, 
one of uh, one of the under 24 players that I'm quite well known with uh, is uh, Blinky Bill Foreman. Has unfortunately had an injury, which made that he couldn't get here with the Fishwick team. Also, uh, wasn't an SMO, so yeah, a lot of teams haven't seen Fishwick with Blinky Bill yet. Yeah, he's a big addition. Sounds like that uh, Fishwick is doing a transition. So a transition zone here where Weiss has got out. it. He launches it. Oh, unfortunately, Mar can't defend that. Great grab by the uh, intended receiver. Oh, but a Dave big Martin. offensive foul. Marl just Alex getting his body in front of him, trying to stop any progression that he can. Looking for something. Weiss goes up line. McManus shuts it down. Smiley with the disc. He's looking for something, but it, oh wait, no, there's, a, there's something on the. There's a call. There is a call on the field, and they're having a conversation. I don't think half the team knows what's going on, but it is a stoppage. Heads of state isolating Lachlan Wise here. He's got some space to work with. And throws the break. Can he connect? He can. Too easy. Really nice throw there from Simon Smiley Andrews. Uses the wind to his advantage. Just puts it around and allows the wind to bring it back into Wise. Would you uh, say you would have to try and either stop the throw getting out that back break throw or would you just try and put more emphasis on the, the player to make sure that that's not even an option? Well... It's a breakside throw, meaning that the mark has the job of stopping that pass. So if you put anyone downfield into that space, you're just allowing them a free pass. So realistically, the most, <laughs> the only strategy that you really have in that situation is to get the marker to try and cover that around pass, make the thrower throw something else that might give your defender a little bit more of an option. Yeah. Wise words, John McDonald. <laughs> Or frisbee basics. <laughs> don't don't get broken. I have frisbee words. <laughs> Wind's actually picked up just a little bit for this last game. It yep. feels like it may be the strongest it's been so far today. Fairly common here in Brisbane that your mid-afternoon wind is your strongest of the day. I say most most Brisbaneites aren't used to this wind though because we only play at night. Um, so, do you think it affected the the play for the Brisbane Mammoth? Yeah, definitely. Um, something that we often sort of struggle with. We're used to being able to attack in a bunch of ways that are a lot less effective once wind kicks up. Everyone watches the disc roll pass. Picks it up. There is a zone by the Hoss, or Melbourne Juggernaut. He's trying to break through it. Not looking. All the handlers are moving nowhere. See a very aggressive zone set here. You've got four people in close around the disc. The goal of this is going to be to restrict, heavily restrict the options that the thrower has. And there it goes. Mambo with the disc. Wants to swing it, doesn't swing it. Puts it in Mortimer. Throws the hammer, but dropped. Look, it was, it was a hard throw. Don't blame him. But uh, he did have all the time as well. He did, and then uh, at this level, that catch you would probably expect to be made. The receiver's probably quite unhappy with that. Having said that, the Fishwick O-line is very, very young this year. A number I, uh, of these guys may be in their first nationals or second yeah, nationals absolutely. season. Yeah, absolutely. I've, uh, according to my research, I, I saw that four of the seven Fishwick O-line is uh, under the age of 20, which uh, really says something about uh, ACT Ultimate. It means that they're getting some fresh blood in. Really good development. Yep. Hoss looking for a big flat hark. All he has to do is look up, but he doesn't. Moving up. A lot of movement in front of the disc, but nothing behind there. And that results in the D. Great block. You can see the dump didn't actually give themselves a lot of options. No, not at all. He had to try and run up the line. The only space he had available. Dump, did, uh, dump defender did a very good job. Mortimer uh, moving the disc. There is a crash through the fence. Clearing the sideline is being called with a big crossfield hammer to Mumbo. 
Ahmed yeah. looks at it. He wants to do something with it, but there's no options for him. He's going to have to do something a little bit difficult here. He hasn't got too many options in close. The team's spread out a lot. Ooh. And there's the danger when you try to play very aggressively and push people downfield. You ask your thrower to do something difficult. In that yeah, case, absolutely. Mortimer couldn't quite come up with it. Hoss walking slowly to get the disc. Taking their time, setting their man, getting everyone, everyone ready to play. Tony Castrignano picking it up. Nice break side flick, or inside flick. Doesn't want the deep option to come out. Rani goes back, Castrignano. Suits it. Oh, Mortimer gets up but can't connect. All the options in the world. Takes us the safest one. And that means that Hoss is up 4-2. First break of the game. A lot of credit to the receiver on the huck. And that one, we've seen a lot of turnovers. Throwing hucks in that direction, fading out this near side, left side of the field. The receiver came with that straight away. Recognised that the wind was going to push it across and got in a position to make the catch. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at this very nice replay. Waiting for it. Oh, I, no, that was the D. Never mind. <laughs> Thanks, Fausto. <laughs> so, uh, this is the first break of the game. If you were the Fishwick captain or coach, what would you be saying? Um, let's see. At this point, I would probably be saying get some water in them because I think they've got 12 people. It's their third game of the day. Yep. Uh, James Lee is in this game who has been coaching Fish Week for the season. They gave him a last minute call up, needed an extra pair of legs. Uh, the legs haven't been playing a lot of frisbee this season, so we might want to interview him afterwards and see just how he's feeling. With I was going to say, he did make the comment of uh, James Lee, 97, coach, but playing due to short roster. Yep. <laughs> Makes it explicitly clear that uh, he is not usually part of the team. Indeed. Or a playing member of the team. And Missed his flight this, uh, last night, so it's just flown up this morning, which probably hasn't helped his... Uh, what is it with people missing their flights? I heard uh, one of the I-Bean players, Fursal, missed his flight last night and then missed another one this morning. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure, Matt, how many of... Uh, Juggernaut's world team are here and how many are yet to arrive in the country for nationals yep. and or might be joining them over in Cincinnati in July. They look like their roster is short here just based on the size of that group. I would assume they probably have another four or five guys yet to join them. Are they mainly uh, internationals or...? I know a couple of internationals will be joining them at some point in the season. I don't know if they're coming over for the Australian Championships or joining later on. Yep. But I would not be surprised if we see a reinforced juggernaut on the Gold Coast in a couple of weeks' time. So would you say that's to uh, combat uh, the, the very stacked colony line that they have for this national season? Well, it's probably more because they want to go to the World Championships and do well. That's very true. you got to get that practice in. Yeah. But, you know, you obviously want to take on the best teams you can. And so uh, Juggernaut and Colony Plunder will be looking forward to matching up on each other on the Gold Coast, as will a number of other teams. It's always a pleasure to take on teams that are forming for a big championship. You want to play good opponents. Wise with the disc here, played on the Aussie Crocs in Poland last year uh, at the World Games, which is the most elite ultimate tournament in the world. Uh, luckily, probably one of the most creative and inventive players in the country. Uh, pretty incredible assortment of throws, moves very well downfield, defense and offense. He's very much an all round oh, Too easy. That was a very good uh, uh, put, though, with uh, his pull. 
just floated for days, let the entire team set up, yeah. and, and generated that block. Michael Chong coming through, picking off the disc. Kashigaro picking it up, just dumping back to Chong. Goes back to Castriano. Too many people in the end zone. You gotta go Della as well. well. I don't even know what the force was then. They uh, broke forcing, it so many times. Yeah, a forcing flick, but a couple of aggressive cuts, particularly Trung going up line, mm. caused the mark to play more aggressively forward, and then some really nice break throws. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Castagnano with the little high lefty backhand through the mark, become very much in vogue in the last few years. And then Wise showing his arsenal of fakes inside over the top and then throwing it around. Mm. Also looking strong. Looking like they can't really do much wrong. Well, I'm sure that they're hoping to be building and building with every tournament. Absolutely. So who have we got on the line here for uh, for a host there, John? How's your eyesight? <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be, Matt. And there's a couple of people on this line that I don't know. I see um, Mark Ishwood, Woodley in number one. I think that is Hoppy in two. Yeah. We have Moroni with the disc in three. I think Smiley Andrews in four. Uh, five, I'm not actually sure who that player is. Is that Taylor? Uh, I think that's Frey. Frey. Yeah. Okay. Declan Deck Frey. Frey. Oh, great pull. Just bounces in. It's a nice upline cut. Trying to get it off that sideline. Oh, nice break to Mumbo. But there is a pick on the field. Everyone's stopping. Turning around. Making sure that everyone's back where they should be. Saying that, Mambo were, had fields of space. There was no one even close near him. It looks like that Fishwick is trying to do some sort of horror offense. Three handlers back and uh, a few downfield. Look, there is a downfield option, but McManus nearly gets it, but Frey with a great block. And there is a call on the throw. Smiley and Mambo are talking about something. And seeing if that affected. But we'll figure it out pretty quickly. I feel like everyone's actually having a conversation wasn't part of the uh, initial conversation. Sounds like there's agreement that it's staying with Isherwood. Teams have accepted the turnover. Yep. Juggernaut looking for the fast break, trying to attack. Fishwick attempting to contain. Still haven't matched up completely. An easy front of the uh, cone score. No problems. 6 2. Pass are taking it away. Yeah, had to stay coming down there, looking like they were playing a poaching defense off the handlers. So that means is the player who is, oh, as we see, an ambulance coming across the field, which is not a good sign for a player from the Mammoth team. Um, their poaching defense from heads of state looks like they had a player sagging off, meaning that they were uh, not marking tight to their own player and moving into the throwing lane. So where the thrower was looking upfield to try to make a pass, putting extra defenders in that space. Just simple things that can uh, get get the team going again. And that sounds like that they need it, that's for sure. So uh, we do see, uh, you might not see, it is, it is off screen, but uh, there is a ambulance off to the side of the field. You would have seen, um, uh, in the, our last game, Dan Gladish taking a bit of a nasty fall, and uh, as a result, it looks like that he might need a bit of a stretcher. Don't know what he's done to himself. Hopefully it's not too serious. That'd be quite a shame. 
Anyway, the pull's coming up. Issue with a big outside in. Using that wind to carry it across the field. Strenson loves to catch it. Very uh, ballsy, to say the least. Isherwood with fantastic defense on the first cut. A great find from Adam Mortimer. See the mile thing he had some space. Number 20, Matt Vados has a frisbee, looks for something, doesn't get it. Goes back to Strensum, goes back. He wants to throw it, can't get it. Matt Daly. Getting a bit of a rough and tumble on the uh, mark there by Isherwood, but doesn't matter to him. However, there is a pick call, looks like as Daly was clearing out, Isherwood bumped into Strensum. Mortimer keeps the disc, coming in at whatever it is. Three, two, don't know. Strensum with the upline cut, looks off, but he goes the high risk hammer, of which is Deed. Not too sure who that was Deed by. Number 35. Dylan Taylor. Dylan Taylor. I don't know Dylan myself, but apparently he can get good blocks on hammers. Well done, yeah. Bro. From uh, from my information, it looks like he is uh, one of the the rookies on this uh, whole squad. Even though he is only uh, 25 years old, but he was through the uh, Hoss Div Two team. He's made his way up the the Div One, and uh, apparently has uh, more hustle than uh, the rest of the team combined. <laughs> Heads of State have done quite well. This is their tenth year. Uh, sorry, their 12th year as a club. Um, done quite well in going from a single team. It started out at Junior Nationals into quite a big club now, running multiple teams, women's teams, mixed teams. So great to see a product of that club development out here at this level. Oh, Ishua with the full hand to it. Unfortunately, it was just a bit too spicy for him to handle. Issue you've done well, pressured a lot of passes there, forced had to stay into a lower percentage option. Absolutely. Almost got away with it. Woodley couldn't hang on. He'll be kicking himself for that. Woodley, a top level player, would expect to make that catch. Holds himself to very high standards. Warner with a really wide course. Oh, is that a strip? No. Ooh. The disc stands. And Woodley picks it up. Attempt. Does he want to do anything with it? He does. Suts it. Ooh, with a great bid by Mortimer. But doesn't even phase the Hoss player. And that is the goal. Adam Mortimer, great effort for yeah. a 41 year old. Still out here kicking it with all his teenage O line compatriots. Yeah, definitely doesn't uh, bid like a 40 year old. That's for sure. <laughs> Saying that, did you see uh, oldest man on the field, uh, Leon McIntyre? Have a few tumbles in the last game. He, uh, put, he put his body on the line. You may not have been looking at the Chile roster. There were some notably older people on that roster. Matt, Leon was a spring chicken compared to a couple of those guys. Oh, wow. Well, uh, Tom McGacky, Steve Campbell, Mark Junker, none of those guys have been playing in the Masters division for quite a while and still rocking it with the, with the young kids. Yeah, absolutely. It just shows that when you start playing Frisbee, you, uh, you rarely give it up. McManus worked hard for that. He made about four cuts up and down the field to get that disc. Number 32, Calum Sandbridge. Connects. And Mamba has acres of space. 
That's a goal. Fishwick back in the game, 7-3. Sometimes you just accept the gifts that the other team offers you. Goes both ways. You might get a lucky bounce, a lucky drop, a misread. Absolutely. They should get away with that one. You know, uh, I was told by uh, a wise man, Michael Scott, that uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's I'm what sure that Wayne came up with that. said that. Okay. For those sitting at home, that is a office reference. Thank you. <laughs> So see, there's been a number of points since Fishwick have had a defensive point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what they come down in here. Uh, the direction they're going is they're going downwind. It's a crosswind, but they have a little bit of an advantage. So heads of state having to play into a slight wind and definitely towards this near sideline. Start down a bit, not quite as strong as it was earlier in the game. I'm slowly, I'm starting to feel the heat now on the back of my uh, neck with the with the sun. Uh, <laughs> with the uh, with the sun going down into the, the day, I'm pretty sure. Is this the last game of the day? Yeah, yeah. this is the last game. We've only got the two games on here. Um, you may see on some of the shots, uh, Colony Plunder is playing against Bench on the far field. So much. All right, Mikey has the disc. Goes back to Hobby. Go back to Mikey. Fishwick uh, zone seems to be doing something. So you can see here, in comparison to a zone that Juggernaut played earlier, there's not a lot of pressure around the disc. Uh, the goal of the Fishwick zone there typically will just be to slow down the offense, make life a little bit harder. Huck goes up. And Huck connects. Not in though. Still looking for it. Mikey wants it. Mikey's trying very hard to get it. Can't get it. Starts to go backwards. Willie with the disc, looking. Goes for the super dump. End zone defense have done well in covering the open side. It's always your first priority in covering a cutter. But unfortunately, you can't cover that. Um, the mark there just got a little bit overexcited. You saw as he was chasing the player who caught the disc up the line, he's over pursued. And so he's gotten himself out of position, which allowed the thrower to just step in for the break side. And with that, it's half time. You can see here, Isherwood feeds and the mark just over pursues on that fake. A simple back end around the mark. All right, half time. If, uh, I'm trying to think of other ways that we can uh, get Fitchwick back into the game, but there's not much else. No. I'll allow you to think about that for a few minutes, Matt. And while we have this half time, I'll take my own break. Return very soon. All right. For those who uh, don't know about what uh, BCI is, you might have been watching because of a frisbee friend of yours could be playing this game. Or uh, the fact that Everything uh, everything here at BCI is uh, a bit different to other tournaments, even though it's not really. But here in Brisbane, we're very lucky to have uh, this sort of uh, weather, especially since the beginning of the week has been uh, pretty, pretty horrible. Just really gross, disgusting, humid. But uh, it's pretty good now.
Welcome back to the Brisbane Canberra Invitational 2018. Hoss took a pretty, I wouldn't say pretty easy, but uh, it was 8-3. Uh, it was uh, pretty uncontested. And uh, let's hope that uh, Fisher can bring it back. Fisher fish with seven on the line. Ready to go. Hoss took a bit longer in their timeout. Maybe they're just relaxing. Maybe uh, those guys from down south are just not used to this sort of heat. It's a beautiful day here in uh, sunny Brisbane. And uh, with all that, looks like we're ready to go. Fish with the pull. Pick up, looking to wise, about to crash down the net. Looks like Fish is doing another transition zone. Woodley, Smiley. Soots it. Ishwood's under it. No worries about that one, but doesn't make it in. Throws it to the end zone. And a nice, easy score. 9-3. Fish have got to do something to stuff that through. It looks like that they're losing a bit too much ground on their uh, transition between their zone and their man. And hopefully they'll be able to solve something quickly. Slowly walking to the front of the end zone. Look, it's the end of the day. People are pretty tight, especially when you've got a, a very uh, short roster of uh, 12 or 13 your team. You know, for a two day tournament, you're going to be uh, pretty sore by the end of the day. Mortimer, hand up, ready to go. He's got the pull. Maroney puts the big outside in. Keeps the disc just near the brick mark. Ems Lay has it. Cannot connect though. Now with Haas on the offense. Della got to cut, stopped cutting, started flexing instead. I think he just wanted to show off his muscles. Della still wants that frizz, gets it. Looking to swing, back at it. Back to Della. Della's looking for something long. 
doesn't throw it, throws the inside pass, but then he drops it. It's unfortunate. Tvaras off to the races, but no one wants to pick it up. Lay picks it up, but there is a stoppage. Weimer on the mark says that it's coming on too. Waiting for everyone to stop moving, so hopefully we'll be able to continue play. Mortimer is the one with the, uh, the problem, trying to fix out what it is. Having some sort of conversation. This can back in. Lay looking for something, says no. Says, you know what, I'm gonna jack it instead. Cal, unfortunately, couldn't connect. It's Cal Sandbridge. Looks like that, uh, from a commentator's perspective, that Fishwick uh, trying to jam things where they don't belong. They're trying to put things where they should be, but uh, they just can't connect with that. Now Maroney's looking for something downfield. He's He's hungry for it. He's really tasty for it. But instead, the, it's got to be high. And instead, he decides to throw something away for the sake of throwing it away. Mambo got the D. Walking up to the front of the end zone. Looking for something to do. Throws it in. No problems at all. Goal of Fishwick. 9-4. That looked too easy. Sounds like uh, Fish is doing a lot better on their defense. Shutting any options down. There's nothing there. Marini decides to throw it away to anybody. Well, towards it, yeah, it was for Lockhart, but didn't connect. Probably four or five meters away from him. Looks like the, uh, the whole squad's tied. Everyone on the sidelines being pretty quiet. I think everyone wants to go to this garlic bread festival later. If you don't know what that garlic bread festival is, we got the uh, Welcome to Bowen Hills. It's, it's actually a place, not, not a statement. Uh, after party for BCI here. Can eat a bunch of garlic bread if you want. Just coincidentally, there's also the garlic bread festival, but that's the main reason why it is. Nice center. Fishick with this transition again. Let's see if they can stop any movement. Ishwa goes over the top. Wise looking for something. Fakes the hammer. Ishwa keeps going. Back to Wise. Breaks through. But unfortunately doesn't collect. 28. Sam Shellard picks it up. Manus wants it. He wants better options. Dally gets it. Dally's looking. Fakes it. Looks behind and gets hand blocked. Woo! That was a tasty little treat. Read it from a mile away. And Smiley picks it up. And it is a nice, easy goal with all. A punch. Spike. 10-4. The head of state. for moments where I'm eating so I'll allow Matt to carry this conversation jo John was John was here the whole time he was just um, tying his shoes <laughs> he's actually grabbing lunch and that uh, that sandwich actually looks pretty good how much cheese do you have on that like four slices unfortunately at the end of the day as they're packing lunch away 
you take what you're given. That's so true. It's uh, chicken, cheese, and hummus. Yep. As you can see, we've got a pretty solid squad over there supporting, uh, I think it's mostly the rogue ladies. Or it could be the Fuse ladies. They've got very similar jerseys this year. They do. Although Fuse have made their team very clear with the large letters saying Fuse. That's true. Now, there's a lot of ellipses down there as well. Ooh. Andy Maroney, that is a bold strategy. There's and a big, uh, big crosswind coming here. He's throwing it towards the near sideline with the edge heavily up. The wind is always going to play massive, massive games with that disc and he's been punished for it. As the disc is going to come back about the nearly the Hoss brick mark. Let's see if uh, Fishwick can use this. Lay out the disc. Scoop over the top. Ooh, ooh, ooh it's every tight. Max Trencham. Good Back to lay. Good decision from the head of state player not to go in and cause a dangerous uh, collision there. Really this important for players to respect each other's space and each other's bodies. Well done. This is a Hoss zone. Something I haven't seen before so far. A bit of bump and grind, but. Well, we've seen it the other direction. I haven't seen them play it in this direction so far. They're pressuring well at the moment. Fishwick have gone back about seven or eight metres. Not making any metres until you get someone to break through the fence like Mambo did. Moving it forward. Mortimer still wants the disc. Doesn't get it. Couple more gaps. Throws it in front of him and. Oh, what a great grab! Worked as hard as he had to to get that. Well, sometimes you get a little bit lucky. You find a hole, you put the disc in it. And yeah, absolutely. Sometimes your man brings it down. But then again, you'll be, your team will be thankful for you to work that hard to get that down. So, 10-5. Wind see. has really settled later in the afternoon. Absolutely. I think as soon as it comes to about 4.30-ish, Brisbane time. Great uh, weather wisdom there from <laughs> Matt Beavers. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to take it. Keep what you're giving. Fishwick's getting a bit excited on the sideline. It is the end of the day. People are pretty done for the day, it looks. But you never know. There's still games to be played. I'm guessing both of these teams both uh, had uh, buys this morning. That's why they had to play this. There's been five times lots today, and uh, teams only had to play three games, so they would have had two buys at some point. Yeah. <coughs> Enough of a break. Trong looking for something. Get hubby. Back to Trong. You can hear Fishwick again calling out numbers, counting the number of passes that have been made. So you can expect them to go to man and man defense, which they're doing now. Oh, that is a very interesting pass by Fishwood that has obviously been fouled because it usually doesn't come that wobbly out of his hands as an executive player like he is. Wants to put it, can't see anything, fakes it. Goes back to the dump. Goes back to Joe Hop. To Liu. I was very much wrong. The oh, transition at that time. It was a fake transition call. And as good as that bid of Marl Hingy was. Couldn't collect. Lovely throw from Alex Britton-Jones. Excellent ability to control the edges of the disc. You can see he sat the front edge up, allowed the disc to soar and wait for the receiver, ran it down. Yeah, absolutely. Watching this uh, highlight, I just want to see how much air Marl Hingy got. Well, unfortunately, we won't be able to. Hoss, 
on the other side of the field, uh, we see the Colony Worlds team versus Power Lunch. And if my eyesight is correct, which I doubt, it looks like it is 5-7. Pull from Wise again. 5-8. Ewan Wyman with a great chase to put pressure on early. Restrict the metres that Fisher can get. Another zone from Juggernaut. Well, he likes the hammer over the top. Connects. And one was sent to the other way. Over the top. Woo! Wow. That's impressive. Top shelf throw, Adam Mortimer. Take a bow. He's missed a couple of hammers earlier this game, but he knows his role on this team is going to be to take some shots. Can't get gun shy about it. And he's found his target beautifully there. The, uh, the no stall hammer, it works. You know, no doubt in his mind that he thought that this wasn't going to his man. It might have helped that the uh, there was no wind, but even so, it worked out well and uh, got one more point to the board. Oh. Every good thrower makes their calculations based on what the wind is doing. He was able to judge that one in the absence of wind. He probably wouldn't have thrown the same shot if the wind was around, so well done to him. Another uh, another angle for this replay, which was unfortunately cut short. The disc is up. Ben Matthews Hunter with the pull, and tries to be the first player down as well. We have another of these zone looks from Fishwick. Looks like a 2-3-2 two, two structure, innovatively named because there are two people, then three people, then two people. Diallo with the disc now. Is he going to sort it? No. Goes after Hop. Over the top. So like the last nice point. Nice cheeky one. They're calling numbers, but they're still holding the zone. Many fakes, but just going to swing it. Jello coming in. Joe doesn't want anything to do with him. Smiley, front of the end zone. And Ishul were jumped in, or is uh, they checking him? No, nope, never mind. <laughs> the, uh, the conversation on the field is uh, if his boot touched a single blade of grass. And uh, apparently it didn't. Well, it did. Number 28, Sam Shell. I got the D, wanted it more. Can't get it out. Dave Matthews going up the line. Can't get it, but it does not matter because it is a turn. Actually Number Mark seven. Smiley Andrews forces the throw low and wide. McCallum can't hang on. <coughs> Ooh, it looks like they're doing a bit of a, a split stack in the end zone to isolate Smiley Andrews with another slap spike. They're becoming more common in Australia in recent times. Just giving one player a lot of space and strong throw of the disc. Very, very difficult to cover. I thought you were going to say that there was uh, a lot more common with spikes. <laughs> one of the uh, conversations I had with uh, Max Hallen this morning and uh, one of the comments, uh, questions he wanted to bring up was um, why, why do Victorians spike the disc more? Is it, he's noticed that there's been rise and with uh, the data that I've collected today, she, he's not wrong. Okay. Look, if the under-22 national championships in November are anything to go by, we're going to see an exponential boost in the number of spikes at national level in it's years true. coming. Uh, I don't think a goal got scored without some kind of excessive <laughs> celebration there. I'm um, curious how many discs they may have needed to replace in that game with a few pretty serious kick spikes. We might have to uh, introduce a uh, NFL-like rule where you get penalised for excessive celebration. Well, you just have to be smart with your celebration, stage map. You just got to make sure you don't ta uh, taco it. Don't disrespect the opponent. Don't, don't damage the disc. the disc. Yeah, exactly. Um, other than that, I think you're 
you're uh, welcome to have some fun. Mm. What would be your go-to spike? If you did like oh. the best catch in your entire life and you had to spike it, what would you do? <sighs> Look, I'd, I'm a big fan of one that I stole from the NRL, which is you catch it on the run, you throw it back down, and then you run off the field and sit down and applaud yourself. <laughs> That's very good. Let's see if Mambo can get there, but unfortunately... If Mambo made that, that catch, he would have been worthy of that spike. Yeah, absolutely. Great beard from him, couldn't reel it in. So he's just died on the downwind. Mambo was uh, another of the U24's players on the Blue Bottle squad. Unfortunately, he was injured for the whole tournament. It's actually really good to see him on the field here. Uh, I believe he's been off the field pretty much since December. Mm. So really good to see him back in the game. I did see him getting a, a deep tissue massage later this, uh, earlier this morning, earlier today. Well, thanks to Q Academy for those. Let's see if Def Credit move it up. Taylor's got the disc now, looking for something up line. Throws a catch the Mortimer with a big step out block. It's a fun battle between two guys who are probably about the same height, but probably 20 or 30 kilos of weight difference between yeah. Mortimer and Castagnano. Absolutely. Tony, a uh, pretty serious Australian rules football player when he's not on the ultimate field. Enjoys his time in the weight room. James Lay, the season campaigner, just trying to talk to his troops here. Trying to get something out, but... Yeah. As much instruction he gives his team, he still has to huck it out. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't tell anyone to cut for the blade. No. Nope. And it looks like it might have been a, a stall out. Because no one's moving. Nor is anyone collecting the disc. So, I think they have agreed that it wasn't a stall out. And it is going to be a Hoss possession at the front of the end zone. Taking their time, getting set up nice and uh, easily. Make sure there are, there are no picks. There haven't been that many picks this game in comparison to other games, which is good to see. It means that the offense has been quite clean. No one's uh, cutting in front of each other. Taylor cuts the brakes up, but doesn't get the frisbee. Frey has the frisbee. Swing it over to the high side. Puts it to Taylor. Taylor dishes it off. Gives it back to Frey. Frey, big pump fake. Wise wants it. Wise scoops it. Looking it back over to the high side. Doesn't get it. Wise again. Goes to Joe Help. Fakes. Nearly turfs it. And that is a good looking put. By number 85. Let's see. That was a Meyer. Very strong flick. He's always had that. You can see Wise at the back of the stack. He starts making a cut and pointing where he wants the disc. And Weimer finds the right address and delivers. the other side of the field we still have uh, lunch and colony going head to head some of the uh, colony players and lunch players have swapped teams over the past couple of years but uh, it's still a good contest for the last game of the day moving back to our game the game that should be commentating we're uh, seeing Fishwick We're seeing uh, both Hoss and uh, Fishwick battle it out. Not too sure how uh, Hoss and Fish have been going throughout the tournament. Um, I could probably guess or even look it up on my phone. <laughs> Looks like Della, boys. the uh, absolute hungry for that disc. Wants it more than anyone else. 
gives a good chase down. McManus centers it back to Mortimer. Mortimer puts it. It's a very low huck. Straight to Moroni. You'd see that cut starting from a long way from the throw. Moroni checked in. Figured that it was going to be an extremely difficult task to get the disc all the way into the end zone. And played the odds. And this time came up with the goods. See some switching at the front of the stack between McManus and Mortimer. Generating a bit of confusion. Had to stay. Not gaining ground yet. Fishwick doing a good job of holding them in. Well, he looks for something. Throws a big lofty backhand over to Thomas Della. It's a good target if you're going to throw something lofty. Yep. Della, a big, big boy with a big, big jump. And a great fake to uh, nearly break the ankle of Matt Daly. Puts it up. Oh! And he took his eye off the disc. You can see as he went up there. Don't know why you would do that. He's still in the field of play. Looked like he was trying to make sure he was in the field of play. Stanstrom walking the disc. Della going to be on the mark. A couple of tall boys. Stanstrom looks long, fakes it. Looked at Daly. Has it. Infield play. Good hands from Daly. Stranson with a bit of push and shove, but it's all good. Keep it on the high side, said Coach James Lowe. Just comes very close to the ground. A little air bounce where and it goes down and then up. Mortimer puts it. Oh a lovely looking flick. Learns from his last throw, gives a little bit of extra juice, pops over the defender, and very nicely judged into the receiver's hands. Yeah, very well done. 13-7. Just been updated by one of the players. Um, Colony Plunder on the far field is currently undefeated in this pool. They beat Juggernaut in a comeback win earlier today. Fishwick have not yet won a game. Ooh. Fortunate misread, but doesn't matter. Hop in the middle of the field. Goes to Wise. Looking for downfield, can't find anything though. Looking up Until field. he finds Lucky Wise. Juggernaut with a really high work rate downfield. I'm not sure whether the camera's following the cutters enough to see, but you can see him charging, uh, cut a lot of cutters coming in from short, charging deep, coming back in. Very sort of cyclical offensive structure. And with that, it's 14-7. Uh, One more point gets him. So looking at the uh, details of the tournament, just like John said before, uh, Mammoth, you guys finished the top of your group, didn't you? We did, yep. Which is very promising, coming very close to the national season. <laughs> it's, it's always nice to beat teams. Absolutely. So you guys had a very uh, successful BCI last year? We did. Where Actually, uh, the team that we went to university against this afternoon was the team 
we had to call off the game against in the final last year. Uh, 3-2 when a storm hit. Yeah, the disc was going a bit sideways. Challenging conditions, Matt. Yeah. Challenging conditions. More than a thrower's breeze. Mm. Hey, he's got the disc in the middle. Looking for something, but this, uh, this host zone seems to be doing something. Mortimer's got his hand up saying, hey, pick me, pick me. He gets picked, but unfortunately he can't collect. Actually fairly well thrown from James V. Difficult though. Mm. Um, maybe a uh, larger target might have been slightly easier. And that is a textbook hammer and speaking of Tommy Della. Speaking of picking a larger target, Della does well there, finds Taylor. Pops out the uh, finger guns and to finish the game off, 15-7. And that's the game, folks. And that uh, concludes the first day of the Brisbane Canberra Invitational. We might have a few uh, more highlights for you to say, but that's about it for me. Thanks for uh, watching and tuning into the uh, Ulti TV stream. If you are in Brisbane, this is all day tomorrow uh, with both female and male teams playing it out to find out who is the uh, champion in the uh, British Camry Invitational 2018. So with that being all said, I'm going to sign off and uh, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning.